good morning students on demand of the students we are revising today the most important lesson that is we are not afraid to die if we can all be together by gordon cook and allen east this story children suggest an individual uh, and a family adventurous ordeal at sea it is an account of the narrator's grit and courage to face adversities especially when one enjoys the faith and support of his kith and kin the story is a heart rending account of how the family of the narrator his wife mary his son jonathan aged 6 and daughter susan aged 7 had a close encounter with death during their voyage after crossing cape town their boat wave walker was caught in rough seas and was badly damaged by a gigantic wave the family was badly bruised still they kept their courage for they found their strength in their togetherness the lesson is a treatise on courage and valor if one keeps one's calm in times of adversities and maintains faith and conviction in one's own strength even god seems to stand by the side of such valiant and brave people the st- the story can be divided into three major parts the dream voyage in which they prepare they built a wave walker the boat in which they traveled the first leg of the journey that was not troublesome at all the second part talks about the disaster that they confronted and the third part talks about how did they struggle and saved themselves to be safe at last so let's begin this story children the narrator and his wife plan a voyage around the world just like famous captain james cook they have been preparing and perfecting their seafaring skills for the past 16 years they get a ship which is 23 meters long and weighs 30 tons wooden hulled named wave walker they test it in the rough weather for months in july 1976 they all start their journey from plymouth england they sail from africa to cape town which was quite a pleasant journey before heading east the narrator hired two crewmen larry wigel and herb seisler to help them tackle one of the roughest sea the southern indian ocean they encounter strong and alarming waves during the second day by december 25 they all managed to reach 35000 kilometers east of cape town the family somehow manages to surpass the bad weather and celebrates christmas together the weather changes for the worse and on january 2 the big waves hit them they try to slow the ship down by dropping storm zip and hit a heavy mooring rope in a loop across a stern but it doesn't help much they carry the life raft drill attach lifelines don life jackets and oil skins the narrator accepts his approaching death and starts losing consciousness when the ship is about to overturn a huge wave hit again and turns it right back he suffers injuries in ribs and mouth he grabs the guard rail and sails into the ship's main boom he instructs his wife mary to guard the wheel as he realizes that the ship has water in the lower parts his crewmen 
starts pumping out the water. The narrator goes to his children's cabin and checks on them. His daughter Sue informs him about a bump on her head, which he ignores because his major concern is to save the ship. The narrator does waterproofing on the gaping holes. This makes water to deviate on the right side. The hand pump gets blocked due to debris and electric pump gets short-circuited. However, he later finds a spare electric pump and connects it to drain the water. They all keep pumping the water all night long. Their mayday calls are not answered as they are in the remotest corner of the world. The struggle continued and the narrator tried his best to protect the weakened starboard side. The same evening, the narrator and his wife sat together holding hands, thinking that their end was near. His children continuously supported him, which gave him moral support to keep going. They had struggled a lot, but still they did not leave the courage. The wave walker sailed through the storm and made it. The narrator then calculated their exact position by working on the wind speed. While he was brainstorming, Sue gave him a card that she had made expressing her love and gratitude towards the family. He instructed Larry to steer the course to 185 degrees. He said that if they were lucky, they could hope to find an island by 5 p.m. He dozed off and suddenly got up around 6 p.m. He believed that they didn't make it and was disappointed. His son came and informed him about how they reached the Isle Amsterdam Island and he called him best daddy and best captain. They reached the island with little struggle and with the help of inhabitants. The whole team, the family and the two crew members never stopped trying. The struggle and hard work finally saved them.